Welcome to another Poly 399 tutorial video. What I want you to do this week is practice building a do file that you will use at a later date. So what I'm gonna walk you through here is the do file that I want you to build this week. Uh, and we're gonna use that do file as a template for, uh, or like as we're gonna start with that do file uh, next week or the week after next. Uh, for the next assignment. So this week you're going to be building the do file and then next week you're going to be actually using it to answer some questions in D2L in addition to doing, doing a few other things. The reason why I want you to get used to building this particular skill is because it's what you're going to need to do for your research reports and so it's best practice just to make sure that you're used to doing, um, doing that and seeing what it looks like. The other thing I want to introduce you to are measures of political knowledge in surveys. And this is where I'm going to cue right away. We're en going to end up using the 2011 Canadian election study for this. And I'm going to show you and walk you through using my do file uh, to show you why we're not using 2019 and why we're not using 2015 either. Uh, just a bit of background about how we measure political knowledge in surveys. We've got a couple of options. Typically when people have measured political knowledge, what they do is they ask about, ask people to recall the names of political actors or the names of political characters. Uh, and often it'll be closed ended. So they'll say like a classic question is who was the first president of South Africa after apartheid? Uh, the correct answer is Nelson Mandela. So they might list Nelson Mandela with a couple of other options and then people could choose a correct answer, an incorrect answer, uh, or they could just refuse to answer the question or just say, I don't know. In which case, typically what we do is we give them a point for getting the question correct. We give them zero for everything else and then we would carry on. And so the problem with this is that uh, some people are much more willing to guess, even if they don't know the answer, uh, and other people are, are much more willing to hedge and say, I'm not going to say unless I'm absolutely 100% certain. So even though I'm like 85% certain I have the answer right, I'm still not going to answer it. Uh, and so what this means is that measuring political knowledge that way uh, means that we get some artificial estimates. So... Uh, some people are like the, the propensity to guess as opposed to like hold back a little bit is like systematically associated with other characteristics about people uh, that we care about for politics. And so that's been critiqued. And so what people have done instead is they have um, said, well, what we should be doing is what we should is we should be um, like making it harder for people to answer the question, right? We should be making it open-ended so they actually have to give us the correct answer, something along those lines. So this is what they did in 2019, and I'm just gonna show you what this looks like for my do file. So I've already built the do file for the tutorial. Uh, so I'm just gonna open up the 2019 election study. Here you can see that it's open. If I were just going to do a quick search for knowledge variables, I know from looking at the code book in 2019 that I've got um, uh, this block of four questions where it's asking people to name their premier, the finance minister, the governor general, and the president of Russia. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like to uh, see the like premier variable. And I'm just gonna warn you right now, if profanity really bothers you, you may want to like prepare yourself because uh, this is what we get. So we can tell right away, the computer's taking a little bit of time to spin this up. Uh, this is what it looks like in the code book. Like we'd like to see how widely known some political figures are and they ask to ask the, answer the questions. We know they're asking them to name their premier here. And you can see right away, we're getting incorrect Jason Kenney but I would code that as like, oh, the person probably is from Alberta and knows that they're a premier. I would check to see if they're from Alberta, to be honest. But I would, and my first thought is they probably know that it's Jason Kenny. They've just spelt it wrong or something because the E and the D are close to each other on the Ford, on the keyboard. I've got a Doug Ford here, but I've got a bunch of Doug Fords here. And I don't know why this is being coded differently as that one. I have a Douglas Ford. I have a Ford. Um, I have two Brian Pallisters, presumably from Manitoba there. I've got a just Legault for Francois Legault in Quebec. I have some editorialization. I've got more Francois Legault's. I've got a Kenny. I've got a John Horgan in all caps. I've got Jason Kenny spelt different ways. I've got John Horgan with um, punctuation. Uh, I've got gobbledygook. 
I've got somebody who says Justin Trudeau, so they're confused about federalism. So this would be incorrect, but this tells me something interesting. I've got somebody saying something about yesterday in French. I've got some editorialization again. Uh, I've got things that make no sense. I have editorialization again. I have people naming their province, naming Andrew Scheer, a lot of editorialization again. I have no idea who these people are. Uh, incorrect. I've got somebody who I think maybe lives in Elizabeth May's district. Perhaps like I'm looking at this one and just being kind of like, oh, maybe they think that Elizabeth May is their premier and they're confusing premier with um, MP. I don't know. I have homophobia. This is one of the reasons why I personally am really judicious about the kind of open-ended questions I ask in my own work because um, bigots are going to bigot in all of the places you let them to. And like, this is no exception. Uh, I've got some Blaine Higgs. I've got aucune idée en français. Uh, I've got Blaine Higgs. I have, I don't know. Um, Dwight Ball is in there too. I, Bernadette Jordan, this is like, no idea who that is. Um, Bill Morneau. So we've got some people saying that the Minister of Finance is their premier, which is interesting. Um, they might be, I don't know what the screen looks like, so maybe they're putting this in for the next question. It's, I don't quite know. I've got somebody who's literally laundry listing politicians. Uh, I've got somebody who's giving some Nova, New Brunswick specific criticism because like the Irvings in New Brunswick, I don't know if you know the details of New Brunswick politics, but suffice it to say, we've got some interesting things there. Uh, we've got some interesting commentary on... Saskatchewan politics where Bradwell's not been premier for quite some time, but they're listing Bradwell and Scott Moe together. Uh, Brian Pallister, British Columbia, a lot of can't recall Campbell. Like this is Gordon Campbell. He's not been premier for a really long time. Can't remember. Can't remember, but I know his party. Can't think of it, but I know his party. Kathleen Wynne spelled incorrectly. She's not been premier in Ontario for quite some time. Christy Clark hasn't been premier in BC since 2017. Uh, Quillon hasn't been president, uh, premier in Quebec for quite some time either. Do they mean Jason Kenney? I don't know. Um, I've got some capitals for a bunch of things. Uh, yeah. Did you guys study book mail? I don't know what this means. Do not know. Yeah. Donald Trump, oh boy. Uh, Donald Trump and Angela Merkel. Doogie. Uh, oh, lots of editorialization. Uh, yeah. Lots of editorialization. This is not useful in this particular format. If I were to try to tab it with, like, just to see if there were numbers associated with this, it becomes really quickly clear that there aren't. These are actually just, like, names. And if I try to run the whole thing, it takes quite some time and it doesn't even cover the whole screen. Like I, I can't even see the whole thing. And so what this tells me is that I've got probably, my estimate give is that I have at least 25,000 unique responses that if I wanted to use this in 2019, I would have to sort into a single usable variable. I am not going to do that. And I am going to strongly advise that none of you do that either <laughs> because it seems completely arduous and like a waste of my time. Um, Cause you'd have to like pull every single one of those and actually put them into a spot about whether they were correct or not. And you'd have to like match it with province. It just is a disaster. So I'm going to show you what this looks like in 2015 with the same question. Uh, so here I just know that the premier is CPS, um, uh, 15 underscore uh, 68. So this is what this particular variable looks like in 2015. Uh, I have all of these names. So this is clearly a closed ended question and I have way fewer categories. I have way fewer vowels, values. I've got like a value for every premier, every province. And then I have one for like people who've gotten it wrong, people who've said that they don't know and people who refuse to answer the question. So if I tab this without the label, what I see is I get these numbers and I've worked with Elections Canada data before. So immediately I know that these are Elections Canada codes. So every district or riding in Canada has a five digit number. And the first two tell you what province it is. And they run from east to west. 
uh, and then south to north. So you've got 10 for Newfoundland and Labrador, and then uh, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick. 24 is Quebec, 35 is Ontario. Then we have the Prairies, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and BC. Now in the 2015 election study, what this is telling me is that I don't see any 60s, which means I don't have anybody from the Northern Territories. So either the Yukon, the Northwest Territories, or Nunavut. Uh, and I know from looking at this that my last three values, any other name, don't know and refused, correspond to this 98, 90, 97, 98, and 99. So if I were to record this into correct and incorrect responses, I would take all of these and give them a point, and I would take all of these and give them no points. So this is how I do it. I generate knowledge one, making it the variable. There's the code. And then I write a frequency of it and lickety split, there I am. And if I wanted to verify that I did the recode right, I would make sure that these categories summed into that one and they do. I'm gonna show you, uh, there's more of these in the 2015 election study, uh, but this is just looking at the name of the federal minister of finance. In 2015, it was Joe Oliver. Uh, and so what we've got here is we see, we've got Joe Oliver, we've got the interviewer thinks that the respondent means Joe Oliver, any other name, people explicitly saying don't know, of which there are a lot of them, and people who refuse to answer the question. So again, I want to tab this so I know what the numbers are that I'm going to be moving around. And based on the substantive labels, I know that one and three are the correct answers. So I'm going to give them a point. So I'm going to generate knowledge two equals that variable. And then one through three get a one. And then everybody else gets a zero. And poof, there it is. Now, if I were to like say my knowledge test is just those two questions, I would just add them together. And then this is what I would get. Uh, I have like almost a third of my sample is getting nothing correct of those two questions. I've got um, uh, most people are getting one and a, a very small number of people are getting two. Uh, what I want you to do though is to look at this for 2011. So here's the 2011 election study. Uh, you can see that it's open right here. Uh, and I can see, I want you to, like right away, these are the variables I know I want you to use. Uh, the reason why, if you look at the code book, all of this is going to be at D2L on D2L, but this is section H of the mailback survey. So older versions of the Canadian election study would do the first two waves of the, in, the election study by phone. So the campaign period survey goes by phone. And then the post-election survey goes by phone as well. And then they would, if people were still with them in the survey, they would go and uh, send them this mail back survey. Like literally they would send them this, they would mail it out to them and then folks would mail it back. Hence mail back survey. Section H in 2011 is a policy based political knowledge test effectively. So it's eight questions and it's now some questions about Canada's social programs and people. First question right out of the gate. If someone is working full time and has to ca take care of a seriously ill relative, how many weeks of compassionate care benefits are paid by the federal government? For people who need compassionate care benefits, knowing this is really important. Like, so how many weeks of coverage do you get for compassionate care? How many of you are saying, I would like to choose answer eight, please? I do not know. <laughs> I do not know the answer to this question. Uh, the correct answer uh, in 2011 is six weeks. This has changed subsequent to that. But in 2011, when the data were collected was six weeks. So if you've got, if you're working full time and you have a seriously ill relative in 2011, you could take six weeks of compassionate compare, care leave and the federal government would pay you some support so that you could deal with the disaster that's happening in your family. Second question, if someone had to go to court and could not afford a lawyer, where would be the best place to go for help? The Bar Association, the Human Rights Commission, Legal Aid, Ombudsman, not sure. What's the correct answer here? Are you sure? How sure are you? The correct answer is legal aid. The One of the things that we like about policy tests like this is that they make people feel a little bit like they should know the right answer. And then they, um, you get this kind of like, do I actually know the right answer though? Uh, asking about policy is, uh, yeah, it definitely does stuff that, um, and like shows gaps in knowledge that asking about political actors doesn't. 
Third question. Can people with low incomes receive a GST tax credit from the Canada Revenue Agency? Yes or no? Yes, you can. I always like those. Uh, they don't come to me anymore, but I, I always enjoyed those when I got them. Uh, question four. Can people who quit their job because they don't enjoy it receive employment insurance benefits? Yes or no? The answer is no. If you quit your job for like cause, so if you quit because you're being harassed, if you quit because it's an unsafe work environment, uh, the Canada Revenue, like EI people might look at this a little bit differently, but if you quit without cause, as in I hate my job, like they can shove it, you don't get to collect EI. So you can't access any of the EI that you've collected. So the correct answer to number four is no. Uh, number five, which groups use, which group uses the rainbow flag as their symbol, Aboriginal groups, environmental groups, gay and lesbian groups, women's groups, and again, the ubiquitous, not sure. Uh, I'm guessing most of you know, this is, um, LGBTQA plus groups who founded WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, David Cameron, Arianna Huffington, Mark Zuckerberg. I'm not sure. It's Julian Assange. Uh, where are the tar sands? We should all know this. Um, because they're not in Nova Scotia. And then number eight is the Sierra Club of Canada is an organization devoted to which cause? And they've got the environment, rights of consumers, women's abortion rights, supporting low-wage workers in the third world. And the Sierra Club is protecting the environment. Okay, so from the video, you will have gotten the correct answers to all of these. And now what you need to do is you need to code them into correct and incorrect answers for uh, to build a knowledge index. So... I'll just make that go away. Uh, first one is going to be uh, if somebody's working, uh, the compassionate care benefit one. So you can see it's MBS 11 underscore H1. You see a bit of the question. And you've got these options where it's left blank and then the four substantive choices and not sure. So if we tab this with no label, oopsies, no label this is what we get. So we know we have to slot the negative nine and the one through four and eight into the correct spots. And like right away, you can see, look at how many people are like, no idea. Uh, we know that the correct answer is six weeks, which we know is option two. So that means we generate knowledge equals knowledge one is MBS 11 underscore H1. We recode it. So the negative nine is a zero. The one is a zero. The two is a one and every three through eight is a zero. So we just do that and poof, there we go. Only 8% of people got that one question correct. Now you're going to go through and you're going to write out your code for all of these. If it were me, uh, I would actually, once the, your data set is set up, this is just what you do. I said set more off. Rude. I don't know why that didn't work. Oh, it's this one. Yeah, I don't want them to do that tab. Okay. Boop. There we go. Uh, literally, once that's done, all I did was I uh, had already done the work to do all the recodes to make sure that the correct answer was there. And I had all of these eight knowledge variables. And then I just added them together. And I get my final, final variable. So it tells me the number of people who answer zero, like getting them all wrong is at least smaller than the people who are getting it all right. The point though, is that I have a do file where I know this is for my CES 2011 and I just open it and I run the whole thing and it just like does it. So you need to build this uh, for this week because next week you're going to use it and I will expect that when you get into tutorial for next week that you can just literally go and do this and you just keep building the variable. Okay, uh, good luck. If you have questions, come to tutorial so that we can help you in real time. Uh, but that's your task for this week. Go and build that political knowledge variable from the 2011 Canadian election study.